Easy. You see those black marks right there? The cages. Inside the cages, the really starting to grow now. Gotta get ready for this year's stags. Hey, Feds, it's John Marks, Marks Mugs. It's fixing to be April. It's uh, end of March. And so here in Texas, we deal with a problem every year. And, um,. What comes around this time, uh, late spring, uh, going into the summer, will be buffalo gnats. And I don't know if maybe you live up north or someplace and you don't have buffalo gnats, but uh, in Texas, they're tough. And a lot of the eastern states are pretty rough. So anyways, you know, how do we handle when they come out? Because <clears throat> how you'll know you have buffalo gnats is you'll see these little bitty black things. They're basically flies, but... These little bitty black things flying around, they'll be on top of your rooster's head. They look kind of grayish color, black and gray. And uh, if you go to touch their head, they'll fly off. But you'll notice blood spots on their head. So let me show you what I'm talking about real quick. Let me grab this rooster real quick. Go and scoot back this a little bit, honey. Let me show you what I mean. Come here, son. Come here. All right. So this rooster here, you'll notice, you look at his comb real close, you'll see he's got some little black marks. You're like, man, it looks like, come here, son, it's all right. It looks like something's been pecking him. If you look on this side, easy. You see those black marks right there? And a lot of times when they're still on, you can rub them, and then they'll see them fly off. They get on their comb, they get right here, they bite their ears. You'll see sores and stuff on them. You'll think, what's going on? And what that is, is these buffalo gnats will come out and they'll bite them. And so sometimes you'll see your chickens run to the end of the tie cord. They'll be in the cage. They'll go to one end, go to another. Is because they're constantly biting. And what they're doing is they're drawing blood. And that's what they live on is blood. Okay. So we keep our chickens super healthy. Just like I'm sure you try to keep your chickens uh, super healthy. So what we want to do to combat this is we want to use a um, chemical. Let me get this right here guys this is what we use permethrin 10 uh, this is gordon's they have i think martin's they have all kind of people that put this out um but this is from gordon's comes from tractor supply and <clears throat> what you'll do you'll put this in a sprayer like this a one gallon sprayer and this this is for mites and everything but especially these buffalo gnats. Uh, so what you'll do, you'll put six ounces. Now, if you're just spraying for mites, just put three ounces in there. Three or four ounces is fine. But if you're spraying for these buffalo gnats, guys, these things are tough. Put about six ounces. Chickens have a low toxicity. That's not going to bother your chickens whatsoever. Okay, I wouldn't tell you to do something that's going to hurt your chickens because I use it on mine. And put it in, the sp in, in your gallon sprayer six ounces to one gallon of water put it in here put your one gallon of water and then when you get your sprayer you see the end of this kind of zoom up on that a little bit you want to make it i'm gonna spray it a little bit you want to make it can you see that it's a fine mist okay and you want to go and spray your chickens at night don't do it the daytime because they're they're not on the roost and they're freaking out and stuff and, and you can do this to your barns. Like over there, I have a barn where my babies sleep. So we go spray the roost. We spray the babies and everything. It's not going to hurt them. Okay, now, let's just say that you sprayed your chickens, but they're really having a hard time with the ones on top of their head fighting them real bad. So what you'll do, same thing. You put six ounces, okay, to a gallon. Put it in your bucket and get you a sponge. Put your sponge in here, get it real wet, wring it out a little bit, grab your roost on the tie cord, and take it and just wipe his head under his neck right here, his ears, and all over in his shawl. And what that's gonna do, that, that stuff and that smell, this stuff smells, as soon as you spray it, you can smell it. Well, when you come close to it, it's pretty powerful. But, but that'll keep those bugs off of them. Um, 
if you don't have this and your wife has uh, skin so soft or y'all have some Vaseline, take the Vaseline, mix you some skin so soft with it and take your Vaseline and put it on your pretty thick on your rooster's head and that'll keep them from biting them as well. This is gonna help your rooster. You don't wanna come out here and you got all these, some, I mean, I'm telling you guys, they're tough on dogs, they're tough on chickens, they're tough on people. If you stay out here long enough, they'll eat you up. Now they only live, they only have about a two or three week life cycle and then they're dead, okay, as far as, as, far as the parents, <clears throat> the older ones. And they last about five to six, five to six weeks and that's it. So you're not going to have them all year long. As soon as it gets hot in the summertime, psh, they're gone. They're out of here. But it is a problem for about four or five weeks. So you want to make sure you keep it under control. So this is what we do. Of course, y'all can do what you want to do. I'm just giving advice to maybe people haven't been around chickens long or maybe you don't know about this uh, technique. <laughs> but this is the easy thing to do. Also, if you have mites, this stuff from FM10, super good for mites. You spray them at nighttime on the roost. You spray from uh, month old babies on, on up. Spray them, you spray your barns down, everything to keep mites away. Uh, kills, kills all kind of stuff, but it doesn't bother your chickens. Like I said, chickens will be super healthy, all right? I hope this helps, God bless y'all. They say it's a gentle, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Because they're tame, you know. <laughs> Anyways, fellas, I talked to you here, buddy. Uh, Y'all, about planting grass, you know that it's good. And Man, our cages are full. It's getting full of grass. It's so beautiful and green. You can see how the grass is just taking off. I mean, in between the cages. Inside the cage is really starting to grow now. Got to get ready for this year's stags. And of course, you want a lot of grass for your tycord area as well. Really, your whole place if you can if you can do it, you know. Chicks love that rapido when you mix it with the feed, boy, I tell you. Look at the bodies on these A-cell babies. Come here, guys. Four stags and one four.